I like past tally because of its creative name. Just kidding, that was sarcasm. Because in past tally, you tally points when a line passes over a tile. What if other games did the same thing? Scythe would be achievement Ernie, and Pandemic would be world savey. But don't worry, my opinion of past tally isn't dependent on its name. It's all based on how the game works, which I will now concisely explain to you over here at my desk. The idea behind past tally, other than tallying passes, is to make a connection between your two player pieces on the board. For example, with these two tiles, my green tiles are now connected. Just like that. So one of the things you can do on your turn is to put down a tile. And if you go through one tile to make a connection, that's one point. But if you go through two tiles like I've done here, you get a number of points equal to the scoring table over here. So for example, one pass is one victory point, but two to three passes is two victory points, and then it increases exponentially from there. You can essentially multiply your points by stacking tiles. So from this green player token to this green player token, I go through one, two, three tiles, which again gives me two victory points. But the higher you stack them, the more points you're going to get. You also have the option to move your player pieces on your turn so that you can have better control of where that line wants to go. Sometimes that's quite useful. And speaking of useful, let's get on to the rest of my review. begin with component quality. Now this is some really good quality cardboard. The tiles, the boards, um, the player tokens, it's real thick and I think it's going to hold up really well. Now mechanically speaking, I love the route building, the pipe dream style. I've always liked that. The, the old computer games where you would put down squares that would move the water from one end to the other. I've always li liked that and it's executed very well here. I also enjoy that moving the player tokens is the key. You can't just leave it up to the placement of the tiles. Um, you really have to rely on where those player tokens are and make those count. Now the scoring is clever, but it's sometimes tricky. Um, making sure that you have the right number of tiles, really determining how many passes really actually takes place can be tricky. Once you get it, I think it's not a problem, but it does take uh, some time to get used to. I enjoy the length of the game. It's not too long, doesn't outstay its welcome. Um, you, it could go on forever if the, uh, the countdown wasn't the way that it is, and you wouldn't want that to happen because you would just beat your head against the wall. Um, but it's the perfect length. I enjoy the player interaction element of the game. It's not just solitaire, it's not just you building your routes, but also you can place tiles that redirect the routes of your opponents. Um, because once they get their route set, even if they just change one thing, they can be earning points, a ton of points, round over round. And so you really want to watch that, pay attention, and then put down tiles to redirect their routes, even if it doesn't help you. The conversion table is neat. I like that it's just not one for one. The more points you, or the more passes you get, the more you're rewarded exponentially, and I enjoy that. Now, the game is pretty thinky. It's not just something you can throw down a tile and say, okay, this is going to work. You have a lot to think about. There are a ton of lines on the board itself. Then there's such a variety of the tiles, of, of how um, they can redirect the, the paths. Then you can move your player markers uh, a number of spaces each turn. Um, the possibilities are almost endless. And so if you're prone to AP, analysis paralysis, then you're going to have problems with this game, I think. Um, just because a lot of times we want the perfect thing. We want to make the perfect placement uh, to get a number of points. And to do that, it's, it's going to be difficult. Now, luckily, in the rules, they suggest um, as, a, as an alternative way to play the game is you can introduce a 60-second rule on um, putting a token or putting a tile down. And I think that says a lot that um, they suggest maybe putting down a 60-second time limit. Um, it says a lot that that could easily take too long. So if that happens when you're playing, definitely implement that 60-second timer uh, to help things go quicker. There's no theme. Well, how does the game make me feel? Well, whenever I can make several passes, especially if the tile stacks are higher, I feel really smart. And especially if I can use what my player has constructed to benefit me, I feel really clever. I do feel stumped sometimes, though, because as I mentioned, I can't think what will be the exact placement. I want to have perfection when I put one down. I really want to make that placement count, but it can take forever and I just kind of get stuck there. So I should just put one down and get it done. Also, I feel angry when someone other than myself is taking too long. I just say, get over it. Basically, past tally is for people who like to build routes or think. 
If you don't enjoy most abstract games, I imagine you won't like Past Tally. And honestly, it's not really for me either. I can't see myself playing it again unless someone requests it. I'd still play it then. That's not to say it's a bad game. I think it has an audience and it's great and I would recommend it to anyone who likes games of a similar style. And so, for me, it gets a seal of approval. Until next time, remember, don't take the board game hobby too seriously, like throwing tiles at your opponent when they redirect your path. Just lighten up.